All right, couple things. First of all, um, the way it's going to go is today we're going to I'm going to talk about something uh, that's important as far as your set game goes. Um, the second thing is um, on Wednesday I'm not going to be here all day. All right. Um, next week my intent is to have those two days. Monday and Wednesday, the last two days, be work days, just to polish off anything that you work on, uh, that, that you're still working on. If you could hit the lights, come to think of it, because I'm going to draw on the board for a minute. <laughs> All right, there we go, kind of. One thing I would suggest for this assignment is it would be possible to see, you could probably find images for the set cards um, online, maybe. Um, but one thing that we haven't talked about that I would like to talk about is drawing within a, an app. We, uh, we alluded to it a little bit um, with the Canon game, but what I want to do is I want to expand on it. If we think about drawing for set, what we want to do is we want to have three image views on the screen that is for our first pass at set. We want to have, or actually our, not our first pass at set, but because um, the first pass you could just put the names for the attributes if you want. Um, but our set quiz where you say yes it's a set, no it's not a set. The final version of that we want to have three images, three image views on the screen, and it should show the three cards. Rather than drawing it, though, I'm sorry, rather than having um, a, a, an image for each card, we're going to draw these. But to draw them, we have to know a little bit about how Android images work. First of all, we know what these things are. These things are image views. If I'm going to make the analogy, an image view is sort of like a picture frame. We can put any picture you want to in a picture frame, and the flexibility of this is that we can resize it, we can make it disappear, we can make it reappear, we can do a lot of things with that image view. But we could change the image that is in that image view. All right? So if we had a photo gallery with 10 images, we could make an array of those 10 images, and as the user click through, we, could, we wouldn't need to create a new image view, we'd simply pop our image view, or our image file, into that image view control. What gets put in an image view? Well, an image does. And that image can, uh, is going to be a bitmap image. All right? Now, when I talk about a bitmap image, I'm not talking about the Microsoft BMP file format. BMP file format is an example of a bitmap image. But a bitmap image, sometimes called a raster image, um, is an image where in a nutshell, a map of the bits is stored. That's hence the term bitmap. In other words, for if you consider a picture being, you know, if you had a, tw a 200 by 200 picture, there is a representation of every pixel of what color it is. All right, and possibly some other attributes as well, opacity and, and so on. Now, JPEG and GIFs and PNGs are all raster or bitmap images. Um, the, 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 sort of the opposite of that is a vector image. And a bitmap image is one that when you resize it, you could possibly get the jagged edges for a curve. Because again, it doesn't have the complete information to expand it. As opposed to a vector image, if you expanded it, if you had a circle done as a vector graphic, if you expanded it, it, it is essentially storing the equation for that circle, so it can draw the circle and expand it without 
any any uh, loss of quality. So SVG, I believe, is the the, the format, uh, typical format used for vectors. But we're going to put, we can get the bitmap in the image frame a couple different ways. From a file. And that's what we've done so far, where we've had images. You know, where we did the blackjack game. We pointed to the file that we wanted, and we set the bitmap of that image view using the file. We can also draw. We can also create a bitmap object and draw our own bitmap object. And that's what we're going to do here. All right? So from a file, it's going to go and it's going to set this. We could also create a bitmap object. And a bitmap object is an object. And it's sort of floating out there until we put it in an image view. So we're creating this sort of bitmap, but it doesn't go anywhere until we put it in the picture frame, until we put it in the image view. Now, there's an additional layer to draw on the bitmap object, and that is a canvas. All right? So we can think of a canvas as, wish we had a 3D blackboard here. The canvas sort of sits on top of the bitmap. It would almost be like if I had a piece of transparent film, you know, like you used to have on overheads, and it laid on top of that. And then I could draw stuff on the canvas. And what I draw on the canvas gets added to the bitmap. All right? So canvas object for drawing, a bitmap to be an image that we can create programmatically, and put into a frame that is an image view. There is one more um, thing that comes into play, and that is a paint object. Think of this as being like a paintbrush. And we can set uh, attributes of the paintbrush. You know, if you think about um, a real paintbrush, there would be um, the color of the paint, you know, with standard RGB, um, like you would do in a, in, on a web page. There's the opacity, which I suppose the analogy for an actual paintbrush would be how hard you're pressing, are you covering, or maybe how much paint you have on the brush. Is it a little bit see-through, or is it completely where you cannot see anything behind it? And then finally, there is the thickness of the paintbrush. All right. The paintbrush is also used, we can draw lines with it. So we can draw lines. We can also draw shapes with it. And with each shape, typically, there's going to be a border and a center. So there's, we're going to have, uh, I believe we have, I'll have, to, I'll have to look at the code. We're going to have a paintbrush for the border, paintbrush for the center. So effectively, we say draw, draw a circle make the border so thick, make the width of the circle so big, and so on. And then we can draw it. Now, I adapted this from set because there's no easy squiggly line. All right? So I'll have to take a look at what I did. What I did is came up with three shapes, though. And I'll give you this code. It's your job to integrate it into your app. All right? The three shapes I drew are a circle, a square and a rounded corner circle. Shouldn't be too hard to change that one. That's kind of the oddball. And if I'm not mistaken, that I draw is a combination of two shapes. I'll, again, I'll have to refresh my memory and look at the code. All right, so what is my method going to do? I have a method on my card class that says get bitmap. No arguments. It returns a bitmap object. That bitmap object can be called and 
the result of that can be set as a bitmap of this image view. All right. Now my card object has the four attributes, the color, the opacity, or the, the fill, we'll call it, um, the number, and the shape. I'll have to look at the code to see the exact values, but they're represented numerically. 0, 1, and 2, I think, or maybe 1, 2, and 3. All right? But we'll take a look at that. So I have attributes for these three things. Oh, I'm sorry, these four things. Each one can take on a possible three values. So this get bitmap method will look at those attributes. Now, if you don't have these attributes in your card class, hint, hint, it might be a good idea to have it there. All right. You might have to tweak it if you used a different convention for specifying the the uh, the, the color as opposed to my numeric convention, um, or pass them in as arguments or whatever. But you could tweak this code if it doesn't work as is. So let's take a look at the code, and I'm only going to focus on the one function. And you're welcome to turn off the light if you want. Here is my version of the set application, which isn't exactly what I assign, but it's close enough. And I'll just bring up, there's a get cards button, then there's a get set button. I put the get set in there mainly for testing, because if you're randomly dealing out three cards, the chance of getting a set is not that particularly great. So I forced the hand and said, give me a set. So if I actually got to for the hills, we got to turn it this way, get cards. All right, there you see we have a rounded rectangle, a rectangle, and another rounded rectangle. Green, solid, and that. So that is not a set, and it tells me that there. On the other hand, get a set. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm just flashbacks. Yeah. We you have did a good job on ours last year. Well, you, did, you did respectable. <laughs> all right, this is a set because all of them are green, all of them have two, each one is a different shape, and each one is a different shape. So that's the drawing that we do here. So let's look at the code that produces that. I will post this code. All right. Public method, get bitmap, it returns a bitmap. So somewhere else, this method is called, and the result of this is stuffed in the image view. That's up to you to find where that needs to be done and to do that. All right, I initialize some variables, the width and the height, so that it's 300 by 300 pixels. I initialize my three color variables, RGB. I use this as sort of my bitmap factory. And I create a new bitmap object. 
So now BMP contains a bitmap object. This, you don't need to do both these instructions. I was just demonstrating that this can be done two ways, sort of showing the purpose of a constructor. This I'm calling a constructor for the canvas object, and I'm associating that canvas object with my bitmap. All right. I can do that since canvas objects are often associated with bitmaps, they've given you a constructor that says, hey, you create it and you associate it immediately with the bitmap. Or you can manually call the set bitmap function on the canvas. You don't need to do both. One of those two methods is good. I'm creating my paintbrush, which has a, I'm setting the color to black, I'm setting the stroke width to one, and I'm setting the style uh, as a stroke. I'm not sure what the other what the other options are. going to see later um, the fill coming into play. All right, the choices are fill fill and stroke or just stroke so fill would be just the center without the border fill and stroke would be the border and the filling stroke would be just the border what we are looking at to give put this in some context is we are looking at drawing the set cards I'm going to give you a method for doing that okay um, method is called get bitmap. A bitmap gets put in an image view. A bitmap is the picture, sort of, uh, and the image view you can think of as being the frame. So I have a method on my card class that says get bitmap, and what that does is that looks at the four attributes of a card and draws the card um, as appropriate. And you can see this in action here. cards are drawn by mine, and you go, and it goes in a very set. That saves you from having to scan in or find online a, a set of cards, and plus it gives us practice doing some drawing. All right, we haven't done any drawing here. The main things that are important here, just to rewind real quickly, is we have our bitmap object. We're going to create our bitmap, and then that's going to be put in our image view. A canvas is what we draw on, just like a painter paints on that. You can think of the canvas as sort of being like an overlay of the bitmap. What we draw on the canvas gets put in the bitmap. All right. Uh, finally, we have these paint objects, and these paints simply say like the color, the kind of stroke, those, those sorts of things. All right. So. I must have used 0, 1, and 2 to represent my three colors, with 0 being red, 1 being green, and 2 being blue. Now, you're welcome to change this if you don't like those colors, all right? So have fun picking the colors that you like for this. 
this dot get color remember this piece of code for the bitmap get bitmap which I'll provide to you exists in my card class and my card class has get color get shape get number get fill or whatever I call it so what I am doing is I'm looking at the color and based on the color I'm setting my RGB variables to one of these three values I don't know why I set my paint up here because I go and change it here I probably could get rid of that code up here all right and just like the one line here is redundant. If I use it in a constructor, I don't need to set it manually. All right. So I go and I set the paintbrush's color. And I set the stroke width to 3. Now, depending on what the fill is, I either set the style of the paintbrush to be stroke or fill in stroke. What is stroke? A stroke, if I say draw a circle and I set the style to stroke, it will just draw the outline of the circle. If I say fill in stroke, it will draw the outline of the circle and it will draw the filling of the circle as well. All right. So get fill zero is hollow one is solid and two is transparent so what I'm doing here is I set the stroke style I then set the fill to either be an alpha of 32 or an alpha of 255 what does that mean, an alpha of 32 versus 255? Well, they're related to the RGB. We have the three variables RGB for that. This is the alpha. What does alpha mean in image processing? It's a level of transparency, it is. And alpha of 255 is solid. So the higher number, the more solid it is. If I made the alpha to zero, then it would be completely see-through. So an alpha of 32 is where it gets the effect where it's not as in your face with the color. It's, the effect is that it's transparent. In our case, we don't really have anything behind it to see, but our result is that it, it does not look as solid as it does. So at this point, we have two of our four properties addressed. We have the color. We grab the color associated with this card and if the color value is zero we set it to red if the color is one we set it to green if the color is blue we set it to or if the color is two we set it to blue we set up our paintbrush for this we then go and actually i neglected to mention this loop this loop is what controls how many shapes we draw all right so i execute the body of this loop for as many iterations as there are shapes to draw. So if there's only one, I'm going to do one. If there's two, I'm going to do two. Notice I'm still storing 0, 1, and 2. So I do this and I increment by 1. All right. So in that way, I, I get the number of, the appropriate number of things drawn. So at this point, we have three of the four attributes handled in our code. Two of them are handled through that paint object, the color and the opacity. 
the number is handled by this loop. This loop iterates a certain number of times, depending on what the get number attribute it is. Now all we need to do is draw the different shapes. All right. If the shape is zero, then I go and draw a circle. How big is it? I make it 75 pixels wide. I stand corrected. I bring it over 75 from the left, 75 from the top, plus I'm sorry, 35 from the top plus 75 times I. What that will do is that will drop each circle down a little bit. The first iteration through the loop, I is going to have a value of 0. So the vertical position of it will be 35. The second time through the loop, it's going to have a value of 1. So it's going to be 35 plus 75 or whatever that ends up being, 110. 25 is the diameter of the circle. Diameter or radius, one of the two. I'm not sure which one. All right. I'd guess radius. All right. And then I'm using the paintbrush. Now, if get fill equals two, then I go and I draw the outline. That's where I got confused about the outline here. I draw the outline um, of the circle. Because when I drew it with just the um, filling, the circle didn't look really good. I, I, so I drew it with the filling um, first, and then I go and I draw the outline with an opacity of 255. And it's not black. I don't know where I got that from. It's simply the full opacity, you know, not um, the, the solid version of that color. If get shape is 1 then that means I want a rectangle. So I draw my rectangle, doing the same sort of thing. I start 50 from the, uh, from the left, 5 plus 50 times I from the top, 100, 5 times Uh, I plus 45. Effectively what I'm doing is I'm saying the four coordinates of this. All right. The two left coordinates are constant. In other words, the first point is 50 from the top. The second point is 100 from the top. All right. The other two points are 5 plus 50 times I from the left. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, these are from the left. Five time? No. These two are from the left. These two are from the top because the one gets further down with each iteration, just like the circle. So this one is 50 and 100 from the left, the two points. For the first rectangle, it will be five times or 5 plus 50 times I. So each successive one will get a little further down the line. And then I use my paint. Likewise, if my fill is set to 2, which means that it is only partially filled, a bit transparent, then I draw an outline. I was mistaken about shape of two. I thought shape of two, I actually drew two shapes. I think I was confusing that with drawing the outline because I knew I drew two of something. It's just been a while since I looked at this code. I draw a rounded rectangle instead. And 
And drawing the rounded rectangle, you first create a rectangle. Then you say to draw a rectangle and you specify the radius of the corners, the radius of the rounding of the corners. The higher number that would be, the more like a circle it would look. The lower the number, the more like a rectangle it would look. I'm pretty sure anyhow. Could be wrong now. All right. Now, you can see how you could easily adapt this to draw other shapes if you preferred. You could do it with circles, a plus sign, and a minus sign. Circle's a circle, just like before. What would a minus sign be? Minus sign would be a very not very tall rectangle that was wide. What would a plus sign be? A plus sign would be a very short rectangle and a very tall and thin rectangle, just shaped in the right way. So you could piece together, if you don't like mine, that's sort of my disclaimer. Hey, I'm giving you 90% of it. If you don't like it and want to change the shapes, you're welcome to do this. The one thing would be a nice little exercise would be to draw a squiggly. Given the tools that we've seen, how do you think we could draw a squiggly without resorting to bringing in an image? So we could probably bring in an image. Yeah. Exactly. So. Let's say, and I, ha I have two colors here. So let's say I wanted to draw a red squiggly. I'm going to draw two circles. Actually, I'm going to draw four circles. All right? So I could draw a circle like this. Right next to it, I could draw a circle like this. Probably do a third one for good measure if I wanted to. I would then draw, this is going to be a white circle. All right, even though it's a black marker, I'm going to draw a, actually I'm going to do this in three steps. I'm feeling ambitious today. I'm going to draw a white rectangle here. I'm going to draw another white rectangle here. So I draw the two circles next to each other. I draw a white rectangle here, a white rectangle here. What am I going to do then? I am, what you would actually see would be this then. I then draw a white circle here and a white circle here, a little bit smaller, and alas, I have, if I erase the white circle, I have that, which is close to a squiggly. Now the problem with that is that there's like a little two flat lines here. What I should have done initially was draw the circle so that they touch, so that they overlapped a little bit. So I draw two red circles. Draw a white rectangle here. Another white rectangle there. Probably, if I did this right, a better looking squiggly. Can anyone 
anticipate a problem with this. There's one stupid little problem that I just happen to think of as I'm drawing this. This would work good if it's fully shaded. If it's hollow, I might get some lines crossing. All right? And if it wasn't, if it was partly transparent, the parts where it overlapped would be twice as dark. So if I do an opacity of 32 and 32, where those intersect would have a, a, an opacity of 64. So that would be that. But you're welcome to try this if you want, or substitute your own shapes. Um, I should make this a requirement to, to create your own shapes instead, at least one of them, but I won't. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what I can do, in fact, is let me see if I can find a, just a quick little app that I, sh I typically show. Tell me it's in the recycle bin. I don't believe that. Let me do a real quick I will look for this example, but I want to show you the code 
for this. What I did is I made for a photographer a watermarked image image view. Okay? So you've you probably have all seen like uh, if there's a picture, there'll be a watermark over it that will say copyright Mike Zellers or whatever. That way people, if they steal it, they, they can't use it because that message gets in the way. And yet you can still um, you can still see enough of the image like to see if you want to purchase it or whatever. So what I made is I made a watermarked image. class that extends the regular image view. Now to your point, you could you could probably define different subclasses, you could probably define a subclass to do some of the things that you want to do as well. In this case, what I did is I extended the image view here's the real important one, the rest of them aren't terribly significant, but this one's the most important one. I call super on draw. I'm, I'm overriding the on draw method. All right. In other words, I'm saying when you draw this image view, I want you to do some extra stuff that isn't part of a normal image view. Why do I say super on draw canvas? What does that mean, super on draw? I want to do, I want to really make a really super drawing, so I say super drawing? Probably not. What does super mean in this case? The, well, this is a constructor, but this is, a, I'm calling the on draw method of the super class. Okay, so in other words, an image view already has an on draw method, right? That's how it draws the images on on your screen. All right, uh, that's how it draws an image view. This is still an image view. I still want to draw my image, but I want to do more than that. So what this does is this says, all right, go ahead and draw your image, but in addition to that, do some of these other things too. So I'm extending that method. All right, and what I'm doing in effect is I'm creating a paintbrush. I'm going to draw on the canvas. I set some text properties, and I draw on there hard-coded text, copyright Mike Zellers there. All right, let's see if this happens to be on here, and I can show you the end result. And I will look for the code for this as well. I do not have it on here, so when I find it, I will upload the uh, code, and then you can take a look at it and uh, and see how it works. To answer your question, you could do something like this. Absolutely. I'm trying to think how far you could take this. You really could go crazy with this, and and have a draw a green circle draw but at some point would it become sip, simpler and more reusable than the code that I have if yes then go for it if not then no need to bother it all right a couple of things some of them reiterating some of them echoing my announcements I'm not here on Wednesday I'm having my 
it sounds ominous, I'm having my final procedure. But it's actually good news because things are wrapped up, they can shut down shop and, and move on. So this is my last procedure on Wednesday. Um, I don't know, blame the doctor. The doctor has surgery scheduled on, on Mondays and Wednesdays. So it's funny, people in my Tuesdays and Thursdays class are like, man, the Monday, Wednesday class takes a lot of hits. It's like, well, sorry, not, not, my, uh, not my choice. But at any rate, I'm not here Wednesday. Monday and Wednesday of next week, the last week of the term, um, both those days will be work days. So I won't cover any lectures unless you happen to have questions. If you have questions, I'll be happy to go over anything that we've covered or that we have not covered. All right. Your final exam, I'm going to fold in your third quiz. It doesn't really make any sense to have a third quiz this close to the final. So it'll just be worth all that. And the quiz, my intent is to make it pretty straightforward um, as the other ones have been. So, all right. Questions? The final exam, uh, you, the, yeah, there'll be information of it posted probably early next week or by early next week, and then it'll say it probably will be available like the end of that week to like the middle of the following week. All right.